this idea of community, the notion that people are, are part of something larger than simply themselves, is absolutely essential. Yeah, they started shouting white power across the road and they go, you black This was a shop for your girl got burned down. The only thing I can think they were trying to do was kill us. Grey Asians, we don't fit in the community. One person is like a prisoner in their own house. That is not a good reputation for a prime minister or MP. Tony's People continues Thursday, 9.30 on 4. It's tonight for Cups to the Heart of Australia's Sacred Airs Rock in Naked Planet. After a new series about poems and their life-saving properties in the poem that saved my life. Towards the end of 1989 and in early 1990, I started to get some very strange symptoms and eventually it was diagnosed as a brain tumour. Obviously I was very scared um, and I didn't know whether I was living or dying. One of the things that I found at that time was that I felt that all my senses were heightened. I'd walk along the road, going to work, say, and I'd smell the the flowers in someone's garden. I think, gosh, that smell wonderful. I'd look up at the sky and think, that sky is really, really blue. And that was a line in the poem. There's another line that the same old streets look different now. And that's, that's exactly how it was for me. I'd be going to the park, pushing the buggy with the children in. I'd smell the grass, I'd look at the trees, the beauty of it all. And I'd wonder whether it would be the last time I'd ever see it. And these were all things that were in that poem. It mirrored exactly how I felt. There were words, words in it that I felt could have been written by me at the time. Um, I found it was a friend. It was a friend. It was somebody else. There was somebody in that book that knew how I felt. My bus conductor tells me he only has one kidney, and that may soon go on strike through overwork. Each bus ticket takes on now a different shape and texture. He holds a ninepenny single as if it were a rose and puts the shilling in his bag as a child into a gas meter. His thin lips have no quips for fat factory girls and he ignores the drunk who snores and the old man who talks to himself and gets off at the wrong stop. He goes gently to the bedroom of the bus to collect and watch familiar shops and pubs pass by, perhaps for the last time. Same old streets look different now, more distinct as those through new glasses. And the sky, was it ever so blue? And all the time, deep down in the deserted bus shelter of his mind, he thinks about his journey. One day, he'll clock on and never clock off. Or clock off and never clock on. When I first recovered, I found it difficult to go back to the poem because it was reminding me of something traumatic. But that subsided. Um, and now it's become a friend to me again. Um, and I look on it as, as something that helped me through a very, very difficult time in my life. Details on the poem featured today, or to find out about poetry and creative writing classes in your area, phone Learning Direct on 0800 100 900. Calls are free and lines are open every weekday from 9 a.m. until 9 p.m. and on Saturdays from 9 a.m. until noon. That's 0800 100 900. And there's another poem tomorrow at the same time. Imagine your most stressful day at work. Then imagine working here. Avianca 52, climb, maintain 3,000. Uh, negative, sir. We, we're just adding out of fuel. Okay, turn left, heading 310. We just uh, lost two engines, and we need the priority, please. Avianca 052, you have, uh, you have enough fuel to make it to the airport? The increasing pressure of controlling the skies. Equinox, tonight at 9, on 4. Tonight on Film 4, the network premiere of Mike Lee's Career Girls at 10. And to subscribe to Film 4, call free on 0800 441234 right now.
And now on Channel 4, how Australia is protecting its most famous natural wonder in Naked Planet. This is the dry heart of the driest continent on Earth. The first English explorers who tried to cross this desert perished, lost in the waterless inferno. Yet today, travelers to the unforgiving outback come in air-conditioned comfort drawn by Australia's most famous natural wonder. It has stood at the red centre of Australia since the age of the dinosaurs. It changes every two minutes that you look at it, or not even every two minutes, every minute, so... Amazing. Never really seen it other than a, as a postcard item and thought it was probably sort of magnified beyond its real, uh, its real beauty. Fantastic, yes, I thought the sunrise on the clouds was beautiful to start off with and then when it got in the rock it was beautiful, yeah, lovely. I think it's a lot more than what I expected. Yeah, I like, didn't expect it to be further. so steep. <laughs> really is a special place in terms of the, the landscape, the environment, and probably most importantly to me, the culture. By peak practice. And then at 10 o'clock, it's the big match. Bob Wilson will present champion league highlights. But now back to tonight. Oh, back to you tonight, sorry about that. Just finding out what is uh, happening with us here backstage here on Carlton. And in, how, in just a moment we'll be joining House of Horrors. Tonight we'll be meeting more shoddy tradesmen who are exposed by our hidden cameras. After which uh, the drama continues in Liverpool One with Samantha Janis and Mark Womack, starring as detectives working in the tough world of Merseyside Vice. And tonight's investigation is a sensitive case. But now we join those tradesmen. Oh. 